The biblical legend about the original sin is principle for comprehending the relationships between God and man. Kochar, after the success of a series of his paintings on religious themes, made up his mind about his own interpretation of the fall. This theme inspired many an artist, who usually singled out some episodes of it, which may be conditionally called imposing a ban on eating the fruits of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, temptation of Eve, temptation of Adam, they realize they are naked, white lie, breaking the link with God, expulsion from paradise. For the past centuries, the artists have developed a peculiar tradition of figurative representation of each of the episodes. Some pictured individual scenes of this fateful for the human race event, others united them in a series of paintings. Widely known are frescoes by Michelangelo, Masaccio, pictures by Albrecht Dürer, Lucas Cranach and others. Kochar decided to represent all the aspects and consequences of the fall as a whole in one picture. Such attempts had been made earlier, for instance, in Lucas Cranach's Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, where depicted are the creation of Adam, the creation of Eve from the rib of sleeping Adam, the temptation of Eve and Adam by the serpent, their attempt to hide from God in the bushes, expulsion from paradise. The central scene in the painting is that of God questioning Adam about the reason why the ban to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil was broken. But Kochar was not going to primitively illustrate the biblical story by placing different episodes on different planes of his spatial painting. He wanted to render the theological and philosophical essence of the story that became so critical in the history of the created world of the pre-Christian world. For achieving such goals, the artist specifically invented spatial painting, and this was one of his first works in that technique. It consists of a double-sided mirror and several aluminum sheets with incisions, intricately cut, curved, fastened together tight and mounted on a common pedestal. On the formed planes, individual episodes of the plot are represented that the event he was commenting on had happened prior to the coming of Christ, Kochar signified with two balls, put tightly into the single incision in the top corner of the main sheet, painted on both sides. One side represents the scenes of creating Eve from Adam's rib and her temptation by the serpent. The other, our first parents after the sin. They are hiding behind the bleeding tree of knowledge of good and evil from God, who is peacefully sleeping on the clouds. The scene of violating the ban is illustrated by Kochar in the opposite segment of the composition. The tree of good and evil stands there with the red forbidden fruit still on it, whereas on the reverse side of that sheet it is already imprudently picked and bitten on. The fruit that granted the knowledge of good and evil now crowns Adam's head, signifying the knowledge acquired by him. But blood pours out of the fruit, coloring red Adam and Eve's faces, heralding the coming of death into their, our world. In the center of the composition, Adam and Eve stand, expelled from paradise, all alone, separated by a mirror. A mirror that is a real godsend that allowed Kochar to comment on the event using a high philosophical and theological language. Before the fall, God and man, created by him, existed in one world, in paradise, and communicated with each other. The universe, God and man. They reflected in each other. They were mirrors for each other. The hypostatic unification by God of Adam and Eve in the first man was also the image and likeness of God. Yet he succumbed to the temptation. He wanted to change his nature, to become God. He trespassed the ban, 
preferring the mysterious knowledge of good and evil to the blissful ignorance. The new knowledge, however, did not add to his wisdom. Simply he was equally capable of good and evil. Eve was no longer Adam's half. He was self-sufficient. His second half was he himself. That is what the mirror reveals. Thus, Kochar uses a mirror to show Adam and Eve's pseudo-completeness. The consequence of the original sin and other deriving sins was physical separation from God, and man found himself in another, parallel, as if through the mirror world. To save the world from evil, God expelled them, dressing in our today's flesh, in garments of skin, and the people lost their divine nature and appearance, became mortal. Now in this world of ours, we, like mirrors, reflect only ourselves. We have lost our ability to reflect each other. We are lonely and we see only our own selves, like Adam and Eve. They don't see each other, as Kochar painted them on the opposite sides of the double-sided mirror. Without God, the world of the expelled man was hollow while the man himself remained in unending longing to achieve the divine wholeness. Thus it will be until the advent of Christ, who will restore the broken by the original sin link between the divine and the human. But that will happen in other pictures by Kochar.